Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Kitty Hawks, and I'm a trustee of the MAS, and here to introduce a fascinating uh, and ongoing subject, which is the Garment District. A few years ago, the Garment District was facing a drastic change. The city, in response to complaints from the Garment District landlords that the zoning was outdated, looked at changing the regulations and drastically reducing the amount of space for manufacturing. In fact, what they were planning on doing was consolidating almost all of the work into one building. Yoli Tang, one of New York's great designers and a board member of MAS, set about enlisting help to devise a plan which could preserve the community she knew so well and on which designers and students depended for their work. She and Jörg Schwartz submitted an RFP to the Design Trust with the CFDA, which is the Council of Fashion Designers, as a community organizer. The proposal was accepted, and the Trust studied the history of and the changes in the garment district. MAS, guided by our fearless leader, Vin Cipolla, then picked up the torch and expanded the study to include London, Ma Paris, and Milan, all fashion centers in, throughout the world. The work found that London's manufacturing core had been lost to both real estate pressure and lack of long-term planning. It also found that Milan was working very hard to rebuild its manufacturing base with significant government support, and that France was trying to revive the importance of the Made in France label. The data in these reports has prompted the relevant city agencies to postpone the zoning changes and has made possible a more informed examination of the district in an effort to protect an industry vital to New York and its reputation as an incubator of design. Our hope is that the design community, educational institutions, manufacturers, building owners, and policymakers can begin an ongoing conversation to see beyond their differences and start to plan for the future. We hope that the collaboration between the Design Trust and the Municipal Art Society will be as productive as it has been rewarding. On that note, I'm pleased to introduce first a wonderful video created by MAS with the Academy for Careers in Television and Film, a public high school in Long Island City. The young filmmakers of Making It in the Garment District, A Day with Yoli Tang, are here in the audience. The Garment District is and has been the story of New York for more than a hundred years. It is where planning, preservation, entrepreneurship, urban design, livability, economic development, and aesthetic issues converge. The Garment District is where New York meets the world. Here in the Garment District, we actually make things. And we make wonderful, beautiful things from 35th to 39th Street, between 5th and 9th Avenue. It's a hub of creativity. You can go down the street and get your muslin, you can pick up your buttons, you can go visit your pleater, you can go see how your cutting is going, and you can go check up on your finished garments. I think what's important is proximity. The designers need proximity to the makers, and the proximity is what generates Creativity. Right here on 38th Street, we design upstairs and we cut and we make the original samples. It enables the customers in the store also to order custom-made clothes. We are in close proximity with our factories. They're able to deliver to us on rolling racks from 39th Street to 38th Street and from 35th Street to the store. It's wonderful that everything that we need for completing a garment and for being ready for Fashion Week exists just a few blocks from here. You couldn't make something without makers around you. The hands-on process is lost. The quality of your fabric, the feel of it, its content, its pattern, how wide it is, all factored into the equation of the design. You need to be close to the process. And you know, those things happen in a very, like, live way.
make your samples here, which is like really important. You can send a swatch to be tested. If it comes back and it looks good, you pleat like a yard of fabric. From that yard of fabric, you'll just decide that the bleeding's too static. So you'll cut that fabric on the bias and you get it pleated on the bias and then it starts looking more dynamic and it gets, it becomes, you know, it starts to have form. After you make your samples, you can run up to Barney's or Bergdorf's and sell what you have. And then you can go to Mood Fabrics and buy your fabrics. You can go to a person that grades and makes makes patterns and grades and marks. You can get your production order cut and you can find a factory that will make a small run for you, like 10 pieces. So it's an ideal ecosystem. It doesn't exist right now anywhere else in the world. It is one of the major factors that contributes to the fact that New York is the fashion capital of the world. Everything in here is made in Midtown not just in New York, it's really a locally grown thing. And the fact that the Municipal Art Society has a huge role now in advocacy will just really push the study and the importance of the industry. The Garment District is part of New York's heritage. Most of your bankers and lawyers today had a relative back way then, an uncle, a grandfather, or an aunt either cut or sewed or did something in the garment industry. Re-envisioning the district so that we maintain New York's character and viability in an industry that's as dynamic as fashion and making sure that we can compete globally with the support of the infrastructure that's here is really of utmost importance. Yoli, made in Midtown, 25 West 38th Street. Everything made in Midtown. herself, Yoli Tang. Hi, everybody. And thank you, Kitty, for that eloquent introduction. The title, Made in Midtown, came from the study that the Design Trust, with the support of the CFDA, conducted in 2009. The study brought home the connection between proximity and creativity and its value, not just to us here in New York, but to our entire country. The Municipal Art Society believes that beyond sustaining manufacturing, there's a larger role that we as urban activists can play. Our vision is not just about saving the garment district, it is about the future how we as a nation need diversity in our economy, we need to grow our fashion industry, build factories of the future, and create new jobs for the disenfranchised. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Vince Cipolla and his dedicated staff for championing this course and the Municipal Art Society for advocating for a better future for all New Yorkers and Americans. Please join me in welcoming our fearless leader, Vince Fuller. Thanks, Joey. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm going through some um, uh, 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 research information. It won't be quite as, uh, as dense as yesterday's survey information. Uh, many of you were here and were very patient through that uh, presentation. Uh, and by the way, the, the document that I just dropped, which is like, sacrilegious that I dropped it, is the, um, uh, is the report now available, um, the report that I'll be referring to uh, this morning. So here it is. And you can get that at mas.org. All right. I want to again thank uh, Kitty and uh, thank Yoli uh, for their tremendous leadership uh, in, uh, in keeping uh, this cause bright and relevant and vital uh, and critical in everyone's minds. 
uh, in the city with MAS. Uh, you are extraordinary tour de forces. And uh, we're all indebted to you. Thank you. And um, uh, uh, I know that many of you have been following our garment district work over the last year and a half, our research on the European fashion capitals in support of the very important Made in Midtown study, which was referred to by the Council of Fashion Designers of America and the Design Trust for Public Space, our panel discussions co-sponsored by the Design Trust, our public programs and tours with historian and Columbia professor Andrew Dokart, our garment district mapping using the great survey and research work by the Fashion Center bid, our 2010 summit panel, our op-eds, our blog posts, and through it all, our research. I am so very pleased to report that we have completed our report. Uh, for those of you interested in reading more, as I said, uh, the report is now live on our website at mas.org. Um, and again, I just want to do a little uh, shout out to the folks watching uh, this presentation that are out there, you all that are out there and back there, that there are seats in here. So come in and join the live theater. And I also want to again say hello to those that are watching us as we are live streaming uh, this uh, whole event. Okay, before I take you into the district, let's look at the national context and see how important this in industry is and, uh, and how important it is uh, to New York. Almost 5% of the country's fashion employees are based in the city. The number is quite impressive, almost equal to the city's financial services jobs at 5.6% of the country's total, or the city's media jobs at 5.1% of the country's total. New York City has 165,000 fashion jobs. They generate $9 billion in total wages. More than one quarter of the fashion design firms working in the United States are located in New York City. Focusing even more closely on New York City, we know that the Garment District zip code contains more than 25,000 fashion-related jobs in almost 2,000 fashion establishments. This concentration of jobs and establishments is the highest of any zip code in the country. Let's look at some history. I love this shot. I love this shot. Uh, in the early 20th century, those guys are so adorable. Look at them. Look at them. Um, in the early 20th century, thousands of garment workers crowded the Fifth Avenue sidewalks during lunchtime. In response, the Fifth Avenue Association advocated moving the in industry westward, that way, from the expensive shops. That separation of uses was codified in the country's first zoning resolution in 1916. The garment district has remained in the same location ever since. The city's garment industry continued to thrive well into the mid-century. By the end of World War II, New York City was at the forefront of women's fashion. Despite the indus industry's prominence, manufacturing declined as production moved overseas. In the late 1980s, the union, concerned about the loss of jobs, asked the city for help. The city created a special district that mandated 9 million square feet for apparel related uses. With modifications, this is the basic zoning we have today. You see three different sets of district boundaries, boundaries and none of them line up. Red is the Garment Center Special Zoning District, blue is the Fashion Center Bid, and yellow is the Garment Center National Register Historic District. As you can see, the boundaries of the district are roughly West 35th Street on the south, 9th Avenue to the west, West 40th Street to the north, and 5th Avenue to the east. These dots, I just have to say, with respect to this area of the city, and uh, for so many of us, um, these blocks um, have meant so much. Um, we're talking about the industry today and its history and roots, um, but um, I've shared in, with many of you and you have shared with me your own thoughts about the district. Uh, for me personally, I have lived in the district. 
I started a business in the district, not a fashion business, but yet a creative business, a design business, entrepreneurial business. I had a baby in the district. Well, she wasn't actually born in the district, but almost because we couldn't get a cab. So, um, um, okay. These dots represent the district's diversity. The majority of fashion firms are showrooms or wholesale operators. Production uses include contractors, sample makers, tailors, and suppliers, the folks on Yoli's video. These dots show the density of fashion services, and by extension, the incredible network of informal and formal relationships. As Yoli pointed out, nowhere else in the world does such an ecosystem exist. Our case studies show that the district embodies survival of the fittest. The majority of production firms are small with gross sales of $1 million or less. These entrepreneurs are often immigrants whose work is highly specialized. They have personal relationships with designers and other manufacturers. Some have been able to diversify to withstand seasonal fluctuations, even starting their own labels. Who uses these small manufacturers? First, emerging designers who can't afford to export sample development or production. They rely on these manufacturers' technical knowledge and savvy. Second, niche designers who create small production runs, make their goods there, here. Overseas production would be too expensive for small orders. Third, a number of established New York designers use district firms for some of their work. Nanette Lepore produces locally so she can quickly replenish items that sell out. Theories Andrew Rosen explained at our 2010 summit that using local firms works because transportation and logistical issues are starting to make production in China more difficult. Still, the district's sewing machines are not humming year-round. What manufacturers need to survive and thrive are orders, as Parsons Dean Simon Collins announced at one of our panels, and that means growing the industry. In the first half of the 20, 20th century, all of the stakeholders worked together to create the district. Factory own, owners, unions representing all aspects of production, and real estate interests. Today's voices, including designers and schools, should be actively engaged in plotting the district's future as a place of work and creativity. Our report rec recommendations for growing the industry range from using the streets as runways, as Yoli has suggested, expanding vocational training, organizing targeted trade shows, creating capsule collections, to reducing tariffs on textiles. The ideas reflect the district's challenges and also recognize its strengths. Our recommendations build upon historical precedents, lessons from national and international competitors, and existing financial programs. One of the recommendations to grow fashion must concentrate on consumers and designers. It's time to encourage the consumer to buy local by coordinating a major New York City-based marketing campaign. Obviously, a Made in, New in NYC, Made in New York label would have a great chance of success if the brilliant creative minds of the CTF CFDA could promote it. Seventy years ago, the city's dress manufacturers joined forces with the union to market clothing made in New York. With the help of America's first fashion publicist, Eleanor Lambert, the New York Creation label helped New York achieve its status as a major fashion capital. It's an easier sell today. Affluent Americans try to buy local goods whenever possible, according to a recent American Express survey. In last year, MAS's livability survey, and we highlighted this again yesterday, showed that the majority of New Yorkers appreciated that a Made in New York label meant that they were contributing to the local economy. Consumers are only a part of the answer. If the label is integrated into a larger marketing initiative, it would encourage designers to use local businesses for sourcing and production. Designers could be incentivized to manufacture all or portions of their collections in New York City. And finally, the sales tax could be reduced or eliminated for garments made in New York, using models like the tax incentive program for films made in New York. Manufacturers and other creators face many challenges, and finding and keeping affordable space is at the top of the list. 
Clearly, zoning alone cannot protect this district. Although garment manufacturing is dispersed throughout the district, certain buildings do have a high concentration of production activities. The nine buildings outlined in yellow contain 1.4 million square feet, roughly the amount of space used by the manufacturing in the special garment district zoning district. This means that all of today's garment manufacturing could be consolidated into these buildings. Nine fully occupied production centers would be convenient to designers and buyers, and this vertical manufacturing model would support the contractors as well. Of course, the owners of these nine buildings would need sufficient funds for operation and maintenance. There are a few proposals for funding these manufacturing centers. Lifting the zoning restrictions on other parts of the district could be the answer if and only if it is part of a broader plan to grow the industry and provide security for manufacturing. A portion of the increased tax revenue from the rezoned areas could directly support the manufacturing spaces. The revenue could also help fund a bond that would finance a purchase by manufacturers. The industry itself, a coalition of manufacturers, designers, or educational institutions should be encouraged to invest in the district's real estate. In fact, a group of manufacturers has started investing in the purchase of buildings. In the past, the bid has suggested an additional assessment on buildings to help dedicate specific space for manufacturers in combination with a relaxing of zoning requirements. Despite international and national competition, these midtown blocks remain the most important garment district in the developed world. New York must not take this position for granted. We need to have a coherent city, state, and national policy. And don't get me started on the national stuff. You got me a little bit started yesterday. <laughs> we need national policy for manufacturing. We know that New York City will never again produce 75% of all the country's women's wear. But the garment district is where New York meets the world. The district is not a sentimental artifact from the 1920s. It is a vital contributor to the city's and the country's economy. Now, when fewer Americans are engaged in making things when skilled jobs are most needed, America must be able to produce goods, and the garment district produces. Even in a global economy, place matters, and we must work hard to make sure that New York remains the fashion center. The costs of doing nothing are lost jobs and missed opportunities for strengthening a vital industry. Fashion is intrinsic, essential New York. The Garment District is the laboratory for Yoli, Nanette Lepore, and countless others. We, all of us, Designers, property owners, manufacturers, fashion schools, consumers, policymakers must work together to leverage the district's strengths and ensure that the garment district is a place that continues to matter in the future. This report represents a tremendous amount of work. Um, I want to thank, um, uh, again, Kitty and Yoli, um, all of our collaborators and partners, a uh, tremendous MAS team who've worked on this, Rhonda, Raju, Juan Camillo, Eileen, Joel. Um, again, the full report uh, uh, is on mas.org. And um, I look forward to um, all of you and all of us uh, continuing to take up the work, uh, the very important work of, um, of New York's uh, garment district. Uh, thank you.